My name's David Rodwin, and this is The Life. So in my first 24 hours in Park City, I have seen a feature narrative, a documentary film, and an entire slate of shorts. And before I go and tell you about any of these, first I want to tell you, go see this documentary. It's actually at Slam Dance, not at Sundance. It's called Bible Quiz, and there's one more screening. Go see it. It's amazing. And I'll review Bible Quiz and May in the Summer in the next vlog. Opening night, I got on the wait list for the shorts program number one, and I waited and waited and we got in. I find shorts are often as different from features as poetry is from a novel. Directors take much bigger chances in short films. The first short is from the United States called Whiplash. It features J.K. Simmons as a nearly sadistic band teacher. And I have to say, not only was this tight like a jazz piece in and of itself, but it reminded me so deeply of my own choir teacher from high school, I knew the kind of fear that the students in this film were experiencing, and he captured something extraordinary. The director was clearly a musician by training, and in the end, at the question and answer, he says that the main point of the film is to ask the question, is it really worth it? All the abuse that you get while studying as a musician, is it really worth it? And the great thing about the film is that it doesn't answer the question. The next film was called Jonah, and it was set in Zanzibar, and it was one of the most beautiful short films I have ever seen. Not only does it take you through the streets of the real Zanzibar, it uses some amazing CGI on the level of any great feature film, and it integrates it with this third world in a way that I have rarely seen done on screen. It is a fantastical tale of magical realism, a fish story so grand and so beautiful and haunting and disturbing, and it takes us to a place I've never never been to before. It takes us into a dystopia future in Africa in a way that I've only seen done once before in District 9, in a way that I want to see what the next thing this director does. And that is one of the joys of the Shorts program. You get to see filmmakers who have yet to be discovered, and you get to see some of their earliest works when they're still bubbling with aliveness. Scrubber was a bleak film from England featuring a woman who we don't know who she is, and as the film goes along we keep on trying to figure out, is she a single mother? Is she a wife who has OCD? Is she a prostitute? Is she someone living out sexual fantasies? And none of these questions that are raised are ever answered. And while it's great to create mystery, when you are leaving the audience just confused by the end, it actually is very ineffective for me. So while it looked beautiful, and while I thought the acting was really powerful, and I loved that the screenplay had almost no dialogue, and though I was drawn in further and further, I was left so unsatisfied by the end that it was actually my least favorite of these films. The fourth film was an American short by writer, director, actor Michelle Morgan, and it is a fun, tidy, neat little film. It was interesting to see the American films packed in between foreign films, because the American ones relied so much more on dialogue. And while there's nuance in language and in wit that can come out in that way, it actually makes it so the film doesn't leave me with any lingering questions. It was structured well, it was shot well, it has a great beginning, middle, and end, there's a great twist and a button at the end, and when I was done, it felt complete, and I felt like I just had a nice little meal. But I don't think it's a film like Jonah, which is going to be lingering deep under my skin. The images are going to be haunting me for years to come. And that's not just because I'm an ichthyophobe and there are a lot of CGI shots in Jonah of this enormous, terrifying fish. But KIT, which stands for Keep in Touch, is a really promising short and I would love to see the next thing that Michelle makes. But I have a hunch she's going to be scooped up into the world of TV very quickly. The final short was called A Story for the Maudlins, and it is a bizarre short documentary, almost 20 minutes in length. It reminded me in tone most of Orson Welles' film, F is for Fake. It deals with an artist who is unknown, and how this documentary filmmaker came upon this person's work. The strange part about it is that he found out about the work not because of the artist, but because the artist's husband happened to have been a bit actor in Los Angeles, and was seen as a background actor with no lines whatsoever in the final scene of Rosemary's Baby. By going through historical artifacts that were actually intended originally to be thrown out into the garbage, this documentary filmmaker pulls apart a history and develops a narrative from seemingly almost nothing. At times it felt like he was creating a narrative kind of fiction, like he was actually making this entire story up, but at the very end of the whole thing, we see some archival video footage that actually proves this whole thing happened. I'm not sure if the entire arc was worth the wait, and too often I found myself asking about the authenticity of this entire thing. But he had one wonderful technique that I really enjoyed in the way he told the story, and that is, instead of doing the Ken Burns effect that everyone can do on iPhone 
photo these days. He actually did this thing where he sets the photograph onto a table and you see his hands. And then he puts another photograph right on top of that. And then he brings another photograph and he spins it around. And there's something very captivating, something very real about the analog business of grabbing a photograph so that it feels really real and then manipulating it right before our eyes. So I wholly encourage you to see this shorts program number one. You might like one thing more than the other, but there's definitely some great stuff in there, so go see it. My name's David Rodwin, and this is The Life. Well, the way to enjoy the Sundance Festival is to have no expectations, to enjoy everything you're doing at the present moment, because there probably won't be any tickets left. We just found out the entire waiting list is getting in, and everyone is very happy. Woo! On, uh, it's gonna be vlogged very soon. Thank you. We got in! Yes! Yeah, we got in! I feel like Charlie. <laughs> we are in! Charlie the Golden. Huh? Hi! Enjoy! Thank you. You're welcome. We're here at the Egyptian Wait. Theater. We're going in. This is uh, day one. This year we got. 8,102 shorts, um, so it's quite a few, um, and we only accepted 65, so that kind of shows you how hard it is to get into this festival. First up is Jill Soloway, whose feature film directorial debut is Afternoon Delight, starring Jane Lynch and a host of other great actors. Well, this is exciting. Yeah, they actually get to walk on the tarmac. Because I get to take a tram to my plane. I'm hosting the old Jill. Tiny ladies in shiny pants. 